What's up YouTube, Saf here on Super Saf TV. Gonna to be talking about the Nikon D800, which is the latest full frame DSLR from Nikon. I'm really looking forward to it, as I'm sure a lot of you are too. Okay, I've pre-ordered mine and I'm gonna be using it for both photography and video. But in this particular overview, I'm just gonna be looking at the key video features of the camera. All right, now I had a chance to um, check out the camera at the Broadcast Video Expo uh, just a few days ago, and apparently it was the only one um, in the UK. Now I've uh, made a video on it, so um, you can just click on the link here or in the description if you want to watch it later. But overall, very impressed. Finally, looks like Nikon have some real plays in the DSLR market. Okay, so now um, to start with, 1080p video at 24, 25, and 30 frames a second. Now, if like me, you prefer Nikon DSLRs to Canon DSLRs, then you've probably been disappointed so far with what they had to offer. Uh, for example, the up until the Nikon D5100, which is the entry-level DSLR, um, Nikon cameras could only film to a maximum of 24 frames a second at 1080p. Um, very, very limiting for me. Uh, as I'm sure it must have been for a lot of other people. Uh, but now we've got the D4 and the D800, which are four frames that can film at 1080p at 24, 25, and 30 frames a second. Very useful. And also at 720p at 25, 30, and 50, and 60 frames a second as well for slow motion. Uh, next point is the maximum recording length. Um, now, from what it says uh, in the brochure and everywhere else, is that it's uh, the maximum recording length is 29 minutes and 59 seconds. But it does mention in the small print that this is dependent on quality, uh, frame size, and also frame rate. So um, uh, I've done a bit of research, and basically, high quality video you can only film at a maximum of 20 minutes. So, for example, 1080p at 24, 25, and 30 frames a second, you can only do 20 minutes. Also, 720p at 50 and 60 frames a second, 20 minutes is a max. That's just basically because it's a high bitrate. Um, 25 and 30 frames a second at 720p, you can film at the maximum time, which is 29 minutes and 59 seconds. Um, either way, it's still longer than what we're normally used to on DSLRs. I mean, I'm personally using a Canon 5D Mark II, uh, to film this actually and um, the maximum recording length on there is 12 minutes uh, which is all right for most situations but can be limiting for some I know personally I've had lots of issues where 12 minutes has just not been long enough so now you've got that kind of extra um, eight minutes on there so that's 20 minutes not bad now that brings me on to my next point which is very very interesting is that it has an HDMI output as well so you can um, you can connect the D800 to an external device um, in the demo that we saw at the broadcast video expo was um, to an Atomos Ninja so that is a display and also uh, records to a solid state hard drive and um, basically the key thing here is if you're doing this clean uncompressed feed to an external device you can actually bypass the 29 minutes and 59 seconds recording limit so you can in theory record for as long as you want um, with the only limitations being your battery life and also the hard drive obviously but you can record for a long long time which is very very interesting useful I mean I didn't really know about this until the Nikon representative kind of uh, explained to me so very interesting okay um, the next point is the multi area mode FX and DX based movie formats now I didn't really understand what this meant initially um, but what it basically means is that you have different, two different formats to shoot at. FX, which is full, and DX, which is a 1.5 crop. So if you're filming FX at um, 200 mil, um, the equivalent on DX mode would be 300 mil. So it gives you that extra zoom. Um, the D4 has an additional HD uh, crop. Uh, mode which gives you a 2.7 crop factor which gets you really in close as well so very very useful on that side of things um, the D800 has a two modes FX and DX still very useful in my opinion okay the next um, point here is the audio now obviously you've got the external mic in as expected but you've also got the headphone out as well as the audio levels very useful in my opinion um, I've got the, well I'm currently using the 5D as mentioned. Um, one of the issues I've had a few times is um, if I'm using an external mic, you know, in case you, while you're doing everything else, you might just forget to switch it on. Um, you don't know, you don't have any feedback of the levels. It might not be connected in properly. You know, there's lots of things that could go wrong, but because you've got no actual feedback 
on the display you don't know until after you've recorded it so um, very very useful you've got the levels you've also got lots of uh, different audio controls as well which is really good um, the next point is the full manual video control now I saw that there was a lot of complaints about the D5100 not having full manual control on video. Uh, obviously very very limiting um, but no worries with the D800 you've got full manual controls of video to produce professional quality uh, output so it's really really good there. Okay uh, last point here that I've got is uh, the autofocus in filming. Now as you probably know uh, most of the recent Nikon DSLRs uh, come with autofocus in filming um, and have them for some time now. Um, in my, but from from my knowledge, none of the Canon cameras have that. Now I did try this out on the D800, um, not perfect, uh, but that's I think the same with all DSLRs. Autofocus in filming isn't perfect. Uh, I usually use manual anyway, but it's nice to have that option of having autofocus rather than not at all. So that's another possible useful feature as well. Okay, so those were the key video features that stood out to me. I've seen a lot of videos covering the photography side of things, but in terms of just summarizing the key video features, I couldn't find something specific. That's why I've created this video. Really hope you find it helpful. Um, obviously not covered the photography side. There's lots there. There's 36 megapixel image size massive as well as 50, uh, 51 autofocus points lots of other stuff again there's lots of other videos out there which uh, cover the imaging side quite well so um check those out if you're also in interested in doing photography as i will be doing with it as well photography and video have pre-ordered mine um what are your views on it you know drop me a comment below uh let me know what you think and um, I'm gonna, once I've actually got it, then I'll be doing a full review. So um, do hit the subscribe button here or on Facebook or Twitter to see the video first. Um, hope that video was useful. Um, this is Saf on Super Saf TV and I'll see you next time.